Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I want to talk through something that I get asked a lot in the forums and our different groups, and that's how do you connect to uh, third-party apps using not only iOS, but then we'll dive into Android. Now, normally I recommend uh, launching the DJI Go 4 app. Make sure that you have good connectivity, all of your telemetry looks good, and then switching over to a third-party app. In this case, we'll use Droneception. We've just updated this to SDK 4.7.1, which not only includes support for Mavic Air, but the new Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. The connection process on iOS is relatively straightforward. I wanna go ahead and cover it. Let me start with plugging in my cable. You'll notice that I do just have this connected off the bottom port of the Mavic Air remote. There obviously is this side port if you're using a smaller device that you can slide right in there and I'm plugged in, I'm going to launch Go 4. And let me mention, this is the iPad Mini 2. It's an older model. As new SDK versions come out, you're going to see uh, performance degrade over time. So it's always recommended to uh, have up-to-date hardware if possible. So we'll go ahead and ignore that. I'm gonna close these settings. Looks like we're ready to go. What I'll do now is close Go 4. It's important that you do this. Just get double tap, get rid of it. I'll launch Droneception, and Droneception could be any third party app. We have and you can see my aircraft icon move as I spin the aircraft. We tie into the compass there. You can see uh, various telemetry data, Mavic Air in the top right of the screen. So all of that looks good. Now, there are some cases where the connection will not work. And so, what I normally recommend, and this applies to any third-party app is go ahead, unplug, launch the third-party app, in this case Droneception, and then you're going to let it load and plug in your cable. And the reason I suggest this approach is because there is a listener in the app sometimes uh, that doesn't fire and getting a fresh connection from your cable uh, should do the trick. So you can see aircraft icon, Mavic Air, all of those settings. Go ahead and preview. You can see our markers where it will shoot the various photos at different angles. And in some cases, you might want to switch back to DJI Go 4. And a lot of third-party apps, the SDK is getting smarter so that you could stay within the app, but maybe for some reason you want to switch back. So you'll just double tap, slide away, and let's see, Go 4, but we're back in. We have our normal control. I'll just go ahead and try to arm. Table. So we're armed. Everything looks good there. That's iOS. Let's go ahead and look at Android. Now we have this Nexus 7 tablet in front of me running Android. And now Android is a bit trickier. I have Go 4 connected. And what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and connect my cable. Actually, I need to turn this around. Make it a little easier. And this is the main difference. So we've connected and Android will ask which app can access the USB device. And you can see it will actually detect apps that are installed that have permission to use the accessory port. So in this case, I'm gonna select DJI Go 4. And tricky thing is I normally recommend the just once connection Otherwise, you're going to remember this connection and it's gonna be difficult. I'll actually cover this at the end of the video, how you get out of that if necessary. So I'm gonna tap just once. We'll go in, just make sure everything looks okay. This thing keeps turning on me. Okay, so we have go for, everything looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and once again, ignore that. I'm going to slide this away. Now, if I were to launch Droneception, this is a problem that a lot of users have reported. So we're launching, and what you'll see is there's not any connection here. And uh, because of the way Android works, I normally recommend unplugging your USB cable. I'll plug it back in. We should get prompted 
regarding which app can access the USB device. I'll select Droneception just once. And yes, allow the app to use the USB accessory. Droneception is loaded. We see Mavic Air. So that's essentially how you deal with Android. I'll go back to DJI Go 4. You can see it now I'm back in Go 4. I've already given access to that USB accessory permission. Last thing I'll cover for Android users, this is something that really uh, burned me before. I'm going to launch Go 4 and I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB cable again. I've unplugged it and plugged it back in. I'm going to select Go 4. I'm going to select always and this is where I think a lot of people get stumped. I know I did the first time that I was working with the Android SDK and trying to toggle between Go 4 and the app under development. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and do that. Where we are is we've set Android to always use DJI Go 4 when the connection is established. So I'll go ahead and hook this up. What we should see is that Go 4 will launch automatically because we told it to. And obviously that's a huge problem with third-party apps given the fact that uh, we, we might want to use that app, that third-party app. So here's what I'm going to demonstrate, how to undo this. And this is not the most intuitive. This will probably vary based on uh, your flavor of Android OS, but going into settings, we'll scroll down to apps. This assumes you know which app you've made that setting for. So uh, you'll plug it in, you'll see that app launch automatically, and then you'll know, okay, I need to go to the settings for DJI Go 4, and there is this option to open by default. I'll go ahead and clear defaults, and I'm going to kill my settings, go back, unplug. Not a huge fan of all this unplugging and plugging back in. If you guys know a better way, please uh, post a comment below. I'd love to, to hear it. So uh, that's plugged in. Now we're back to this dialog that asks us what app we'd like to allow for the connection. I've selected Droneception. And what we should see is that now uh, Droneception or any third-party app will now have access to the device. See our aircraft, our camera view, and our telemetry. So I just wanted to cover that in this video. It's been something that spent a lot of time uh, helping users. It's definitely something that we've seen change from SDK to SDK in terms of how we manage it in our code. So hopefully the developer of the app is using the latest SDK and you're hopefully using the latest firmware just to rule out any potential issues. And that was an overview of connecting third-party apps with iOS and Android. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.